Welcome to Western Vascular Institute. We're at our MESA office. I'm Dr. Branick. Uh, we're offering you an educational video today on varicose veins and venous insufficiency. So this is a young gentleman who presented to our office with quite a bit of swelling and significant achiness to his lower legs. He had an ultrasound showing that his greater saphenous vein, which we already treated last week, which runs from the inner groin all the way down to the ankle, uh, was incompetent, and we treated that with an ablation technique that we're going to show you today. Also, his lesser saphenous vein, which runs from the popliteal or back of the knee crease here down to the ankle, was wide and incompetent. So today we are going to proceed with the ablation procedure. This is the ablation catheter. It's a long catheter, but the tip is the most important part. This little copper-looking area here is the heat source element, and what we're going to do is put that through a sheath We've already gained access into the lesser saphenous vein, and we're going to insert this at the right distance up the uh, dilated lesser saphenous vein. And then we're going to put some numbing medicine around that to prevent any heat distribution or pain in the tissues during the procedure. So here you see we're advancing the ablation catheter up the lesser saphenous vein to an area where we feel comfortable that it's far away from the deeper veins, which are off the screen, you can't even see them. So it's a good safe distance and we're gonna start there. So what we're gonna do next is empty the leg veins by putting his legs up and head down. So what we're gonna do right now after we've you know, properly positioned this ablation catheter is to numb up the back of the leg. We're going to put what's called a tumescent solution, which is basically a bunch of saline with Novocaine and a little bit of epinephrine into the tissues surrounding that catheter. And therefore, that minimizes the discomfort during the procedure. And you're going to see that going in right now, that black stuff all around that white dot, which is the catheter. You might see my needle poking in there, and that's just the needle going around the vein. So we want to surround all that tissue with the anesthetic so he doesn't feel the heat of the catheter closing that vein during the procedure. And he did well from the last procedure we did on the inner thigh vein, the greater saphenous vein. How does your leg feel after that one procedure, sir? What, what, anything else? What about the achiness? I haven't had since any achiness since. Wonderful. Well, that's the goal. Improve the symptoms. So we like to get fluid above and below the vein, the anesthetic fluid, to minimize the discomfort during the procedure. This, this uh, catheter can sometimes get pretty close to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how it actually kills the vein, the internal lining of the vein and we don't want that heat going into the surrounding tissues or the nerves around the tissues. So that's why the right amount of anesthesia around the vein is important. See all that black fluid is all the anesthetic fluid. We like to go around the vein and on top of the vein, below the vein, so that all the nerves in that area are not feeling the heat of the ablation procedure. And the most common veins that get dilated with venous insufficiency or varicose veins are, are the ones that we talked about. The greater saphenous vein on the inner part of the thigh and calf that runs from the groin down to the inner ankle and then the lesser saphenous vein is very common. It's, it's rare to have one without the other. They typically both get dilated and become non-functional because the valves inside of the vein, a little poke, the valves inside of the vein are just not opening and closing correctly to prevent blood from pooling in the lower legs. So the valves are non-functional, so they stay in the open position. So when somebody's standing and sitting all day, the blood is pooling with gravity all the way down to the lower part of the leg, and that leads to the swelling and sometimes the brown skin discoloration and the achiness and the cramping, nighttime cramping, a lot of fatigue in the leg with that. 
So we double check the position, make sure the catheter hasn't moved. Looks good. We got plenty of fluid above and below the fascia layers in the tissues. And give that a few seconds to kind of kick in, kind of like it being at the dentist. All right, let's go ahead and start it. You let me know if you have any burning, okay, or any pressure feeling behind the knee, okay? Then we'll turn it off and give you a little bit more anesthesia in that area. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay. So right now we are activating the machine. That little noise is telling us the machine's working. That, that little heating element that we showed you earlier is right there, and the catheter's laying inside that lesser saphenous vein, and right now it's burning the vein in segments, and 20 seconds in each, each segment. Then we're just gonna pull it back, and there's little lines on the catheter that show us how far to pull it back. And we like to do two burns in each segment and overlap them a little bit until we get to the point of entry. So we did two burns there. We're gonna pull it back just a bit, and the heating element should be right around there right now. You feeling okay, not feeling any burning? Okay, perfect, perfect. That means we got the right amount of anesthesia in there. All right, so we're gonna move the ablation catheter back a little bit and it's probably sitting right there. And we're gonna ablate or burn that segment. Uh, the catheter is inside the vein and it reaches a temperature pretty hot, but to be exact, 248 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's pretty hot. So it destroys the inner lining of the lesser saphenous vein. That little white dot in the middle of the screen is the catheter and that black line going straight down is the shadow of the catheter. So it kind of tells us where the catheter is. We're getting pretty close to being done towards the entry point. We'll maybe do another burn or two on that vein and we'll be done. Then we'll get him wrapped up with some compression and we will have him follow up with an ultrasound in a few days to make sure that everything is closed up and see how he's doing. And that's about it. We're pretty close to being done. So this is, so this is pretty much the area that we entered. Small little nick in the skin. We're going to put a little bandage on there and wrap him up and then we're gonna check him in a few days with an ultrasound and uh, see how he's doing clinically and uh, hopefully everything will be okay.